Hello everyone, and welcome back to some more Kerbal Space Program. We are halfway around the world from the Kerbal Space Center, which is over here. We're doing a mission. And all we need to do for that is gather survey data, there we go. Now we have to fly all the bleeding way back home again. Thankfully, this tank can actually split its fuel to these engines. Otherwise, we'd be out of fuel long before getting here. But, honestly, I'm probably gonna just land. Because we have gotten all the science for it. There we go, 50,000 funds. 9 science, 24k funds additional. 9 reputation. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna touch down. And we'll get to doing the fun stuff. Jebby here can fly where and fly back home after the episode's done, I guess. He's gonna take a little a little of a bit of a break. He's gonna do a little picnic, wait for daytime to arrive so he doesn't have to fly in the night again. I actually took off like in the middle of the night. So it's fun to see. It's fun to fly for like an hour. Yes, I literally flew for an hour. And then it's like, oh! It it used to be middle of the night, but suddenly there's the sun! And it's sunrise, and I managed to snap a lovely picture of the plane. I mean, it's a nice looking plane, right? All it needs is some additional struts. And it could be grand if we were to get some action groups in here, so we can actually get the, uh, the air brakes to start working. God, that'd be great. But yeah, Jebby is gonna pick a landing site. And we're just gonna touch down and make sure quickly that the uh, steering is disabled. That tends to mess this plane up on landing approaches and whatnot. Yeah, we're just gonna leave the engines off. There's no need for a power landing here. All we need is a stretch of land that seems landable enough. And I know landable is not a word. There we go, very gentle. We're just gonna fly over for a while, and we'll just bleed some speed. I won't make you watch the uh, return flight. Since it took me practically an hour to get here. And that is like, coasting at like 10,000 meters altitude. To spend, uh, to burn as little fuel as we can. Had some, some moments where this plane just spun out of control, which is to be expected if you uh, control like this. And it was pretty fun. One time I spun out at 10 kilometers altitude and it took me a while to get control back of the airplane. At roughly 80 meters above sea level. So yeah, we uh, we nearly took a dive on that one. But everything's fine, we got our money. Even if Jeb were to suddenly die, we'd still have a profit on this mission. Aside from of course losing our most veteran Kerbal. And badass. Yeah, I think I'm gonna aim for roughly over there. We'll try and land and go behind this little bump. Uh, taking off shouldn't be much of an issue, but that will be off camera, so nothing to worry about there. We'll start bleeding a little bit of energy. Okay, that's a little more drastic than I'd like. There we go, we are down to reasonable speed now. Let's turn a bit to the left so we have enough of what seems to be even ground. There we go, just come in easy. Engines are off, that's always good. We're gonna be landing a bit on a hill, which, I mean, we can handle it. Channel. Gentle enough. There we go. Ten point landing. Way to go, Jeb. You nailed it. Quick crew port. Keep it. And back to the space center. There we go. Enough flying planes for now. Let's get on to the meat of the episode. The real science. I've had a thought. It might be a good idea to start going for basic science. Let's see if that gives us the... It should give us the science lab. 
Oh, it gives us the too hot thermometer, which also not a bad thing. Oh, the, the basic science is over there. Well, we'll use that and we'll do some rovery things. Which is not a word, I know. We'll get it. There we go, because we're going to be doing science anyway. Let's head into the space plane hangar and see what science we have waiting for us today. Not the monowing V2. Bad. We've got different plans for you. We'll, t we'll keep the tail for now. We'll remove that module, there we go. What we are going to do instead is add a bunch of science juniors. Now why science juniors, you might ask? Well, we're gonna do some science on the Kerbal Space Center this time. Because the buildings all tend to have a different biome. Which means there's a lot of science to be done. Ooh, that was weird clipping. Hi. Just put a single thermometer over there. Not upside down, there we go. We could put a communitron over there, but I don't think we have any solar panels just yet. We have radiator panels. Arguably useful. We'll bring a bunch of batteries. Because if we are going to be transmitting our... Well, we could transmit the thermometer results. We could also just store them. Both are valid. This would actually increase the amount of parts quite dramatically. We just... There we go. Yeah, that is too much. There we go. We've got one steering wheel at the back. We've got two wheels to keep us up. And hopefully this is going to be atrocious. But... Actually, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna make it a bit shorter, there we go. There we go, we'll call this the Science Rover. It sounds a lot cooler than it actually is, I'm not gonna lie. What we're now gonna do, is proceed to drive around the Kerbal Space Center and do all the science. There we go, seven and a half. Mystery goo. That's 10 already. Lock thermometer. Lock temperature. There we go. Valentina is going to be doing our science here. Take data. And there we go. It is now secured. Probably would have been a good idea to put some sort of propellant on here. Not to worry. We are literally on the runway, so. Full recovery, as in nothing happened. There we go, 12.9 science for... Science, basically! Although pretty much nothing happened to actually give us the science. Now let's get some jet engines on here. Because of jet engines. Am I right? We'll just literally slap them on there. We're not gonna go fast or anything, but it's just to help us move forward. Ah, you see, now that we don't have to take uh, those into account, because we now have engines that will generate a bit of electric charge, we don't have to put on quite as many batteries. Trust me when I say that the science is well thought out today. There we go. Science rover is away. It's looking a bit weird. Make sure we don't go too fast, and uh, there we go. We have science. You know, he's enabled, come on. Oh, I was pressing the wrong buttons. That's my mistake. Observe the material bay. Material study from KSC. Probably could have gone with a little less goo containers. Bad, better safe than sorry, right? Lock temperature. While driving. Doing science. The legitimate way. There we 
we go, burn the engines a bit. We'll go a little bit faster. We regenerate some electricity. That's too fast. We'll use the brakes. Because that's a bump coming up. Don't want to go over it too fast. There we go. This should help us get something cooler. This might be a little overkill. It's definitely a little overkill. Whoops. <laughs> See, this is the bad kind of science here. It's literally nominal. Could you, uh... Could you grab the glue? Might not be able to grab the glue. What we might be able to do, however, is run a remote science if we get close enough. Can only be externally controlled by scientists. God damn it. Well, let's recover everything then and forget that happened. Who am I kidding? This is going to be remembered for a while. Not the smoothest of attempts, I'm not going to lie. Well, we got a bit of more science, which is nice. Yeah, it automatically cleaned all the debris over here. We have a bit more science over here, which is nice. So let's take a look at the contracts. Because these are pretty useful contracts, in my opinion, early game. Sean's Cannery. We can't do any of these flight above a certain altitude because we can barely crest 11 kilometers. We could do a flyby of the moon. It would get us a bunch of money. We'd have to build a good second stage though and... I don't know. I'd rather upgrade a bunch more stuff around the base. However, we've got 250,000 funds right now. Which is not bad. And these guys... Three tourists, they want to go suborbital. You know what? We'll do that. We'll quickly set these guys up on a suborbital flight. Science, ladies and gentlemen. We will use a second... Yeah, we'll, we'll put a second stage up here. We'll have you burn at... 50. There we go. And you can just burn on... I think 50 on you as well would also be plenty. Now what we're going to do is we're going to send up a tower of command pods. We could make it look more stylish. And there we go. This is the, uh, the touristinator or something, I don't know. We'll put radial parachutes on here, we'll put them on here, and we'll put a nose one over there. I mean, I'm not afraid that they're gonna die, but they might... I just want to be careful, you know? Never hurts to be too careful here. So we've got... the staging is all messed up on this. First of all, we're going to fire the big one. Then we're going to... Decouple it. Actually, this would decouple both. So, we need a... New stage. To burn this rocket, and uh, then detach it, and then later on activate all the parachutes. I don't like to automatically deploy parachutes on things. I'd much rather do it uh, manually. And finishing touch. Just to be 100% safe we will add a heat shield. And no game, I do not want to do that. Decoupling right there, and, and, and parachutes. The tourist trap mark one. There we go, this should do it. If not, things will go horribly wrong. 
Now, to assign a crew, we're gonna send up Valentina. Tourist, tourist, tourist. There we go. We'll send a pilot with them just in case. Space tourism! It's not lifting off. Well, I mean, we can literally turn it off and then just adjust things over here, so... As long as it's not a c catastrophic failure or anything, like, I don't mind that. Well, uh... Oh, there we go, we're going up, we're going up. Took long enough. Yeah, we might have set this to full power next time. Might have to set it to full power next time. So we'll combine those two stages on the fly, there we go. Rocket science is happening. Got a lovely little rocket, it's taken off. There's the Kerbal Space Center in all its glory, soon to be bombarded with parts. You might want to inch away from it just a little bit so we don't hit the, la the landing pad with debris. That would be bad. Should be far away enough now that we don't hit the uh, the facilities. There we go. Will this get us into suborbit? It might not actually. It probably not. No, not at all. Well, we'll revert them. Probably a good idea to just set you to full burn. Like, I think this should be able to make it. At least in the suborbit, right? Should be just fine. There we go, get off the floor, you. Start inching right away so we don't hit the landing pad with that rocket when it inevitably detaches. And now it's actually burning with some force, there we go. That boy is still remaining rather low, but yeah. You know, I'm starting to think we might just use a second thump or a second stage. Instead of going for a, uh, a hammer. We're actually going a little bit too fast right now. In lower orbit. Again, we're definitely getting more out of our system this time. Which is good. And because of the way I built the rocket, with that as its main block, basically, this is considered to be a second stage, which is... Best. Yeah, we might just go for a double thumper layout over here, and it's now completely dark and you can't see anything. So I will adjust in post, don't worry about it. Actually, I'm not sure why I'm bringing it up at all. Because you won't notice anyway. It's magic. Yeah, everything's going smooth. Probably not gonna read. Yeah, no. We'll revert again. Like nothing went wrong, we could just recover and go again. So that's good. I will quickly recreate you, just because I can't handle it otherwise. There we go, there's a tourist trap mark two. Looks a bit different, but it's fine. First iteration turns out didn't work too well. There we go. 
you'll be entering head first. And just to make sure we land head up. I mean, the Mark 16 is already going to make sure that we will, so I'm not really that concerned. Just put on a quick stack decoupler here. Thumper. So it'll burn at 50. And then add a second thumper. There we go. You can burn at 91. There we go. Tourist trap mark 2. There we go. Innovation. And we'll get him out again. There we go. Let's lift off and send these guys into space. Actually, we will speed time up a little bit, so we will actually launch in the daytime. Yay, daytime. Poor Jeb's just been sitting there, it's like, can I go home now? Like, nope, you cannot. There we go, that's why we are burning at nearly full. Like the smoke. I'm not gonna lie, it's a very pretty launch pad. There we go. Hopefully the second thumper burning a little bit more efficiently should be able to take us to orbit. At least sub-orbit. Like it was a lot easier to just bring up a single capsule. But we'll send these people into space, nothing to worry about. We'll make a little profit on it as well. There we go, we are far away enough from the launch pad. Always nice to make sure. And now that we have some altitude, we can start burning more efficiently. Apoapsis is not high at all yet, but this will keep burning for a while. Hopefully provide us enough power to get through the atmosphere. Now note, we are going a lot less... a lot slower this time. But because we are still in a thick part of the atmosphere, we're not getting as much friction. Like we're not getting any air effects on the rocket right now, which is good. You don't tend to want many early on in the atmosphere. Basically means you're pushing against the air too hard and things are a little inefficient. Which is bad for us. How are you doing? Oh dear god. This is not going well. Our space program has been cursed today. There goes the, the thumper. Crash in the Kerbin. Nothing to worry about. Can you... Ah, there we go. You're starting to run out of fuel, but then again, Apoepsis is starting to rise. We should be able to make suborbit at least. If not, I will be very sad. I might have to end up being very sad. There we go. Hopefully. Yeah, we should be fine. It shouldn't trickle down too much. So we barely made it this time. These guys can't take a crew report because they technically don't count as crewed. You need trained astronauts to be able to do that. There we go. 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. That's from the other thing. Now we just need to get back down again. Which is why we have brought a heat shield. We could jettison it actually, but I'm probably going to keep it. We will touch down in the ocean, or at least in the water. Technically at the shores, and we'll all be very pretty. We are going down pretty much vertical. Not the best re-entry, but then again we've barely left the orbit, so... I mean, we barely left the atmosphere. Then again, our, spa uh, our speed isn't particularly high. Oh, hi! We could have smacked into that! Oh god, could you have imagined? Probably can. It would have been hilarious. Uh, could you quickly slow down, please? We are so dead. <laughs> 
Well! Uh, yeah. We failed the mission. <laughs> I did not think that would go that badly. Jesus Christ. Well! Sorry, Valentina. You're dead. I am not gonna revert that. Well, we've had our first casualty. Pretty sure these people are not happy with us now. Oh dear. Let's not do any more tourist missions for a while. Yeah, they are gone. Thankfully, Jeb is still alive. Poor Valentina, though. But yeah, I'm gonna end the episode on that disaster. Will we be able to recover? You'll have to find out in the next episode. Until then, if you've liked the video, please do leave a like down below. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. And until next time, have a good one, folks.